this is the story of entrepreneurs. They could be working in a job with a steady income and health benefits and all the rest, and instead they're creating something. They're creating something from whole cloth. And these are all young people who want to use the tools of business to make the world a better place. La Cocina is a nonprofit incubator kitchen. We provide affordable commercial kitchen space and technical assistance to low-income and immigrant entrepreneurs. What our organization was built out of were the women mostly, and Latina women specifically, who were operating informal food businesses either in the streets of the mission or in their home. I was working out of my little one-bedroom apartment, and it took hours to make anything, but now we make about 100 times more than what I used to make in my apartment. As a woman, it's great to have my own business. It just gives you more power everywhere you go, and to know that people love what I do, is, to me, it's nothing better than that. I love La Cocina. It's like the best thing that's ever happened in San Francisco. <laughs> and to Whole Foods, I feel like it's a gold mine of food entrepreneurs. If I could take every entrepreneur in that kitchen and bring it to Whole Foods, I would. We really do believe that, that people should have an opportunity to make a living doing what they love to do. So I think that small businesses operating with very little capital, creating assets for their family, and carving a niche out within which they can live happily is a really successful project for a city, for a community, for a country, especially a country that's struggling at the moment to find ways for people to make a living. It feels like the best way to run a business and it feels like the best way to eat food. Every year in the United States, we produce about three billion tons of agricultural waste. These wastes are usually just left to rot and any way you go about it, they turn into CO2 and methane, which gets released into the atmosphere. So at ReachR, we've developed a technology to take this waste we put it into a sealed chamber with no oxygen, so there's no smoke, no hazardous methane emissions. It's just a very clean burn. And we can actually turn it into a value-added product called biochar. It's really great for agricultural soils. The places that we work and live in Austin are pretty economically depressed, and we think urban ag can really revitalize those communities. Biochar can help improve the overall profitability of a farm, which would allow them to provide more benefits, create more jobs, hire more people, and really expand local and urban agriculture in America. Hopper Kitchen is a job training program for immigrant women, and we make multi-ethnic breads that are inspired by the country that they come from. Immigrant women are the lowest paid workers in the U.S. workforce, and what Hopper Kitchen is trying to do is help them secure work in an industry with a strong trajectory for growth. We provide paid on-the-job training, as well as English classes, kitchen math classes, other sort of essential skills to really excel in the careers. No matter what country you come from, we learn a lot, and a lot of doors open for us. In most parts of the world, women are the bakers. They're making whatever the bread is for their family at home, and they have the skill and the recipe and the tradition. Do you know what you're like? And that's Moroccan. I'm just trying to try something that's different. People come and they say, I can't find this anywhere else. The only person I know who makes this is my mom. And that, I think, really resonates with the uniqueness of our products and our mission. My goal was to really help women build the confidence in the value of their culture um, and help them bring it to market. I want to welcome you to the first week of Entrepreneur University. I want to really let you know that we're really excited to share this journey together. The Intersect Fund helps people build strong businesses so that they can generate better lives for their families in distressed communities. We teach people of limited means how to take their product or their passion and turn it into a way to make money. In New Brunswick, you see streets where businesses are boarded up and you have kids that don't have entrepreneurial role models in their lives. So we really thought that business ownership was a pathway out of poverty. One entrepreneur succeeds, they open up a storefront, that changes the life of that block and that neighborhood. Hey Gretchen, Hi, hey Zakia. We are here at the Intersect Fund's first annual outdoor market. Most of the vendors here are either people who have gone through our business training class or they've gotten a micro loan from the Intersect Fund. To be in my own business is something that I've always wanted to do but never thought I can do and they were willing to help me out, you know, they believed in me. 
we have a vision for a community where businesses are not boarded up. You have a lively local business community, and that when you go and spend money, that gets recycled by hiring people from the local community and then buying from other local vendors, and that cycle just keeps on continuing. We become more optimistic every day. I mean, every time a new entrepreneur walks in our door willing to work hard and pursue their good idea, we're there to provide that training and that capital they need. There's really no limit to the difference that we can make. Living in Pittsburgh, it's hard not to be impressed by the amount of vacant and blighted land in the city. Just along this strip of the street that we're on, there's over a hundred parcels of vacant land, this being one of them. This is an example of the kinds of things that can happen on vacant land, and this is an example of a site that we've helped reclaim. But it's very, very difficult to start from a vacant lot and end with a community garden. One of the big things that GTEC does is to cultivate sunflowers so that we can transition vacant space into community assets. Property adjacent to green space increases in value up to 20%, whereas property adjacent to unmanaged vacant land decreases by 20%. When we have a small success in the form of sunflowers on a vacant lot, that starts building a critical mass momentum for people to figure out how to utilize the resources that are around us in a more thoughtful, intentional, and efficient way. Community development doesn't have to be just bricks and mortar. There's the opportunity for a community to get engaged and do development through greening. And the green economy is really the next step, and the opportunities to revitalize our cities will really come through that. So what we're trying to do is capture those markets as they emerge to help the people that are in these communities get jobs to rebuild their communities. Every single morning we collect coffee grounds and turn that into the food for our grow to home mushroom kits which we saw at Whole Foods. Mushrooms traditionally grow on hardwoods that are really rich in cellulose and coffee grounds are really rich in cellulose too and that kind of allows us to be able to use them as a food for mushrooms as well so in this case we're looking around in urban settings there's coffee grounds everywhere so we're kind of saying you don't need to kind of waste other resources you can use the ones that you know they're already out there. And a lot of people say oh well coffee grounds just compost on their own even in a landfill but they really don't. This actually turns into methane gas. And we're saying, let us take your waste and add value to it. The relationships that we have with our food producers are very important. With Better Ventures, I know exactly where they are. They're right down the street. I've seen their operation. This is exactly the type of business that Whole Foods wants to invest in. 100% sustainability means our own waste from the soil production process, the leftover coffee grounds enriched by the mushroom roots, becomes a really, really rich soil amendment that we can donate back to the community gardens and local school gardens. And at the end of the day, our own waste kind of you know, closes our own loop. And I think being able to offer a sustainable product to help people grow better food, more delicious food, is something that people are getting really excited about and we're you know, pretty passionate about offering that to the community too. There are so many communities uh, in this country that have tremendous problems and they need new ideas and new energy and new solutions. Realize that you have something to offer and you can make a bigger difference here than you might anywhere else. It's really exciting to be part of this group. Our generation is starting to understand that you can make money and you can be successful and also benefit the world around you. To be connected to a network of people who are like-minded is what I'm most excited for. I never considered a career that wasn't working towards social justice. I started cooking, I think, probably out of some sort of subconscious desire because I like giving people things. I think it's a really exciting feeling. The act of, of making a living doing what you love to do has economic ramifications and social ramifications that are sort of greater than the measurable good always had the sense that if I had the ability to do more that it would be not only to change my own life but other people's as well. We really valued these next 10 years as our prime to really make a change and make an impact in our community. Our opportunities are endless right now. We feel we can do everything.